Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is AVJ and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at my blood work and see how it looks after being on a ketogenic diet for the past couple of years. I know some of you may be interested in this. You might be concerned. You hear a lot of rumors about it doing some weird things to your cholesterol and other things or whatever. But as I always say, the proof is in the pudding. You know, it, 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 it all comes down to actual results. Not just by how somebody feels or how somebody looks. It comes down to blood work. It comes down to what the scale says, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so, yeah, in a minute, um, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to switch to another camera and I will be showing, you know, how that looks. I'm going to log into my uh, my uh, what do you call it? It's called LabCorp. I don't know if you have that where you live, but um, over here we have something called LabCorp. And uh, I'm going to log into my account and show you all of the blood work, all of the numbers, especially the ones that are more pertaining to the ketogenic diet. Now, I'm going to be honest. I don't know half of what those numbers mean with, with different, you know, with some of the other things. But um, uh, I'm going to show like my cholesterol levels, sodium levels, uh, potassium, uh, the A1C, you know, things like that. So th those are the things that are more directly related to being on a ketogenic diet. So I will be showing that. But. Uh, yeah, so if you've been following along, you know that I'm in the middle of another challenge. Right now, I'm doing the 300 kettlebell swings per day, along with doing a uh, pro, uh, not prolonged fasting, but doing more of an extended intermittent fasting. What I mean by that is um, I'm doing about 24 uh, fasting for 20 hours and eating for four hours. Uh, that's been going pretty good. I feel great. I feel even more energy, kind of similar to when I was doing the prolonged fast. Obviously, not 100% like that, you know. And it, that was, a, wow, that was incredible the way I felt like during the uh, prolonged fast. But, you know, I feel really good. I feel like some results are happening. I'm not weighing myself yet until the end of all of this, which would be in 30 days. I just want to focus on just sticking with doing what I'm doing, you know, not getting distracted by numbers, except the blood work, <laughs> of course. You know, but, um, yeah, so let me, let me show you, like what, I, what, what, like, what I've been doing as far as the kettlebell swings. If you take a look here. Um, started right around here on the 23rd or 24th. And um, if you look up here, I write down the number that I've done for the day. And I split the kettlebell swings uh, throughout the day. And uh, let's see here on this day, I did 330. Here I did 320. Then uh, 27th, I did 300. And then today, I'm in the middle of today. And uh, right here, I stopped at 24 right here. If you're not if you don't know by now, which I'm pretty sure you do, uh, Kobe Bryant has passed away. And um, I just did a, a set, you know, in honor of him, honor, in honor of his number, uh, number 24. Um, yeah, that's, that was brutal. You know, it just, God rest his soul, you know, him and him and, him and his daughter, man, that, that, that really hit me and my family pretty hard. You know, it's just, uh, life is so short, so unexpected, you know, and, um, you know, I always preach that, like, while you're on this earth, why not live it to the fullest? You know, why not give yourself the opportunity to live a live a long, healthy life? You know, and he did that. And, you know, I want to mimic that in my life. I want to take better care of myself so I can live long because you never know when you're going to go, you know. Anyway, um, so, yeah, so without further ado, let's just get straight into the blood work. Okay, so here we go. Um, as you can see on the screen, I'm in the login page of LabCorp. So I'm going to go ahead and log in and uh, we can take a look at the numbers together. I'm going to explain a few things and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so let's go ahead and log in. I'm going to view the recently submitted blood work, which was January 21st, 2020. All right. Now, like I said before in the other clip, I'm not familiar with a lot of these uh, numbers on here. Um, not a doctor. You know, I will go over my doc uh, go over this with my doctor uh, soon. But for right now, um, you know, I'm just looking at some of these numbers here. Some of these I'm obviously do know about and understand, which would be like the lipid panel, uh, A1C, and things like that. Okay. So everything is looking good. Glucose level down here is at 88. And this was a fasting glucose at uh, early morning. Um, I went to the doctors at about nine o'clock in the morning. Now, when you see a fasting glucose of 88 and you're on a ketogenic diet, 
that could raise a little bit of uh, concern. But what this has to do with is something called the Dawn Effect. And uh, I'm going to go over here. Now what the Dawn Effect is, is early morning release of hormones, primarily cortisol, to prepare our body for waking. It's a natural part of our circadian rhythms. And basically what it means is like uh, usually people on the ketogenic diet, your morning glucose reading may be higher and your ketone levels may be lower. Like I said, I went to the doctors at nine o'clock, uh, first thing in the morning. Um, obviously I was fasting, I'm doing intermittent fasting. Uh, now had I went later in the day, more than likely it would have been, uh, my guess is in the, like, the mid to high 70s, like 75, 78, something like that. But being at 88, I'm not worried about it. So that's that's pretty good. All right. Here's my sodium levels. Now, mind you, uh, I don't know if you remember from my other video, if you watch my other video, I take anywhere from three to five grams of salt per day, uh, pink Himalayan salt. That's a lot of salt for most people. People, I, I used to be terrified of salt. I didn't even buy salt. We had no salt in the house. Anything type of sodium we got would have been in some of the foods that, that I was eating, which was crap foods anyway, which is kind of ironic. You know, I had crappy food, but I was afraid of salt. Anyway, um, so as you can see here, my sodium level is at 139. And that's me taking in uh, uh, three to five grams of salt per day. That's because there's no carbs. I'm not, I don't have any starchy carbs or anything like that. Salt plus carbs, bad combination, all right? Potassium is at 4.7. That's pretty good. Um, calcium is looking good at 9.5. Uh, let's see here. Now, this number here, this alkaline phosphatase, I think it's called, it's saying it's low at 28. The reference range over here is uh, a minimum of 39 to 117. I'm not too sure what this is. This has something to do with, like, I don't know if this has something to do with um, uh, the apple cider vinegar that I take every day. But if my doctor's not concerned, then I'm not concerned. I don't feel any symptoms of this. Um, I think it's an issue if it was high. I think that's when, uh, like, the the dreadful word cancer starts coming into, uh, into question. But um, I'll, I'll look more into this, but I, I don't think there's anything uh, to be concerned about. pH is looking good at 7.5. Now, you see right here in the urine test uh, the ketones is testing negative no that doesn't mean that i'm not in ketosis if you are familiar with uh, the ketogenic diet and how that works you already know what i'm about to say and you want to keep the ketones when you become fat adapted the ketones are in your blood not your urine when you first start the keto uh, the ketogenic diet you will notice that like uh, like if you buy like those urine strips and stuff um you will definitely see uh <laughs> ketones showing up but once you become more fat adapted and your body gets used to burning ketones for energy, for fuel, you'll, it'll be more in your blood than anything. So the best test is always to, get, uh, to test it in the blood, not the urine. Which again, like I said before, I do have some blood uh, test stri strips coming soon. Which I will be showing that as well. And now, for the moment, I'm pretty sure everybody's been waiting for the lipid panel. And here we go. Total cholesterol is... 174, triglycerides 39, HDL 65, VLDL 8. Now the LDL is showing high at 101, which is a couple points above the maximum amount. That is perfectly normal on the ketogenic diet. All right, now if you go over here, there's this uh, page here on the Keto Mojo. Keto Mojo is, which by the way, this is the blood meter that I use to, uh, to test my uh, glucose and my uh, uh, keto levels. On their website, they have an article that talks about uh, cholesterol and how it affects uh, people that are on a ketogenic diet. So if you want to take a look at it, you can go ahead. Um, it's real simple. Just go to Keto Mojo and look under their articles for HDL, uh, LDL, and all that type of stuff. But they explain um, pretty much like how it's all interpreted, how your lipid panel is it, uh, interpreted. For somebody that's on a ketogenic diet, I'm just going to get to the summary down here. And what it says is, to summarize, which part of the lipid panel we pay the most attention to is important. The focus should be on triglycerides and HDL. And research is showing that a low-carb ketogenic diet usually results in improved cholesterol profile by lowering triglycerides and increasing HDL. Slightly higher LDL cholesterol is typically offset by having lower small particle LDL, which will be associated with heart disease, and higher large 
uh, particle LDL, which is not associated with heart disease. So basically, the LDL is I mean, having a slightly higher LDL. Now, I know some people that are on a ketogenic diet that have really high, like in the 200s or something like that, and they're perfectly fine. Their total cholesterol is also high as well. But their triglycerides here and their HDL here are both very, very low. Now, uh, before we take a look at my um, the rest of my blood work here, to show what I mean, I'm going to show you what one of my older uh, blood work results was showing before I started the ketogenic diet. So if we go here, I'm going to go over here. It's June 25th, 2018. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. As you can see here, my glucose was actually at 96, which is pretty high. And remember, at that point, I wasn't on the ketogenic diet. And... Uh, where is it at? All right, here's the lipid panel. Now, as you can see, my LDL was actually high here. Now, again, this wasn't when I was on the, the ketogenic diet, but my triglycerides, right now it's 39. Over here is 99. The HDL, um, I forgot what it was. I think it was, I don't know. I can't remember which one it was, but this is at 54, and the VLDL is at 20. Again, it's the HDL, and the triglycerides that you really want to be uh, uh, concerned about if you're on a ketogenic diet. Um, at this point, you know, I wasn't, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been really impressed with these types of numbers um, with me not being on a ketogenic diet. Now down here, you can see the A1C was coming in at 5.6, which is borderline pre-diabetic at that point. Now, if you take a look at my current one, Did I pass it? Oh, there it is. 5.2. And that's definitely in a normal range. So the, the A1C is at 5.2. Um, which is to be expected. There's no carbs really going in my body. The only carbs I'm getting would be from the fiber and vegetables. And uh, sometimes I might have like those little keto treats or something like that. But if any time, I don't take any starchy carbs or sugars or anything like that. Now, yes, I did cheat once in a blue moon, like I cheated around the holidays and things like that with having completely non-keto foods, but because of the fact that I'm fat adapted within a couple of days, and especially when I did the, uh, uh, when I returned back to fasting, right back into ketosis. That's the beautiful thing about getting fat adapted is you can go off of it for a little bit, not really recommended to consistently do that too much, um, unless you're on a very, very controlled carb cycling diet, which I'm not even going to try to explain that because I have no information or knowledge about that. But, um, so yeah, the, uh, the A1C is at 5.2, so that's really good. Vitamin D is a lot better. Um, it's at 70. Um, I think before I was coming in at like below 30, it was like 28 or something like that. Um, it was really bad at one point. And vit uh, vitamin D deficiency is one of the most common deficiencies. And I was able to correct that by being on a uh, uh, a very nutritious ketogenic diet and also supplementing with uh, vitamin D as well. And also trying to get out more into the sun. But, uh, yep, I think that's pretty much it. Yep, that's pretty much it. Um, so, yeah, this is it. You know, A1C 5.2, uh, triglycerides is at 39, HDL is at 65, total cholesterol 174. Not concerned about that LDL number, um, and everything else looks really, really good. You know, I'm I'm very happy with these results, and it just goes to show that this type of diet is effective. It is not going to cause any harm to your body. It's only going to do nothing but help your body. You know, this is a very, very, very healthy diet if you do it the right way. Of course, you have to do healthy keto. Healthy keto is getting a lot of healthy fat. Um, you know, omega-3, you know, uh, healthy fats. It doesn't mean you're sitting around eating potato chips and all kinds of fatty foods or, or whatever the case is, deep fried fish or something like that. You know, it's, it's about using, you know, staying away from the bad oils like canola oil, vegetable oil, um, you know, things like that. So a soybean oil, you know, and instead getting things like olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, um, ghee, grass fed butter, you know, things like that, you know, that's what your body needs. That's what your body wants. You give it that, plus you're getting your, you know, your vegetables, you're drinking plenty of water throughout the day, you're staying active, 
we should be filling like a million bucks you know but so this is it these are my results um i'm very happy with it i, I would actually like to be even more better and which I'm, I'm shooting for that because if you look back at my other videos i talked about this before that you know my number one goal is of course to lose weight and everything and build muscle but my biggest goal is to improve my internal health i care more about that more than anything i want to be internally healthy nobody i want my i want to take care of this little guy right here my heart make sure that the heart is pumping good and in, in, in really good health my lungs my my blood all of it i want everything all of my organs i want everything to be working the way it should and at the optimal level all right and that's what i feel the ketogenic diet can actually do especially if you do it the right way all right so there you go those are my results if um <clears throat> if you're on a keto diet and you would like to share your results or or share any type of uh stories you might have dealing with that please feel free to leave a comment down below I'll, you know i'll take a look at it and, and respond and everything like that um if anybody's uh uh, uh familiar with what what is, what is it called again the alkaline phosphatase i cannot pronounce that <laughs> if you if you're familiar with that you know leave that down below i'm real curious to see what that's all about i did do a little bit of research on it and everything i'm seeing is just uh, the, the more concern is if you have a high number versus a low number, but I don't know, whatever. But um, so yeah, if you have any questions, if you you know are um, curious about anything, if you would like to know more about anything that I'm doing here, uh, just let me know down in the comments, and you know I'll, I'll leave a leave a response, or even better, I might even make a video on it as well. Um, but stay tuned for more uh, content to come. I'm going to be showing my blood work. As, I'm not my blood work, but my blood test um, as far as my ketones. I'll be showing how that is um, at different points of the day, showing it like after I eat what my glucose levels look like, what the ketone levels look like, you know, so then that way you can kind of gauge and see if either this diet is right for you or if you're already doing this type of uh, lifestyle. I keep calling it a diet and I hate calling it that it's a lifestyle. But if you're already doing it, just kind of like match it up to yours to see maybe something is off somewhere. You may have to eliminate certain foods or whatever the case may be but yep so that's about it i uh, thank you so much for watching this video if you like it please like it please also share it and if you haven't done so already please consider subscribing and if you do turn on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time i upload which is anywhere between two to three times per week maybe sometimes more okay my name is avj i'll see you in the next one